guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone 3. Uh, we're on episode 6, and in the last episode we start getting into Ender IO. Uh, we've got our setup over here. We've got a basic power source setup using magma crucibles, and we also got our cobblestone generators and crucibles upgraded. Now, the whole reason we're getting into Ender IO is to try and fix the mob farm because it was backing up with all sorts of items and we need to get some new item conduits. So first thing we're going to do today is finish that off. So I've got a stack of iron here. I've also got a stack of ender pearls as you can see on my hotbar. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop those in the alloy smelter. And that is going to make a pulsating iron. Now I've just had a thought. <laughs> Just had a thought, which I probably should have checked this beforehand, but is the recipe still the same? It is, it's still pulsating iron nuggets, good. But any second we'll have our first ingot. Nice, now I just need to wait for this to smell up and then we can get started. Okay, so we've now got the pulsating iron ingots, and I've just remembered we got this thing from a loot bag, and this is an Ender Ryo loot capacitor. So it's by the power of Ender School, I have the premium insatiable wonder capacitor. Now from what I understand, the wonder capacitors are basically about two and a half times the um, effectiveness of a basic capacitor and the insatiable means it will affect all machines buffer size. Uh, the premium bit means it will affect it by three and a half to four times. So let's give it a, well let's have a look see how quickly this is smelling. Not very quickly, let's pop this in. We can straight away see that the buffer size has increased by about four times. And yeah, that's going to hell a lot faster, that's amazing. And then that gets us our item conduits, nice. You can see I've now got the item conduits set up. So what we're doing is, from the storage crate, uh, we've got the loot bag opener set on priority 30. So any loot bags will go in there first. We've got the, the anti-barrel set up on priority 20. So any non-stackable items will then go in there. And then we've got this hooked up to the Barrage, uh, barrage, barrel controller, and the storage drawer controller. And if we head upstairs, what I've actually done is I've disabled the loot bag storage. Obviously, it's got a lot of stuff in there at the moment, so we're kind of going through and slowly filtering that out. And yeah, what we're doing is we're taking out epic loot bags at the moment. I was just trying them out to see if we did get different drops or not. Um, but just to try and empty this thing a little bit quicker and then anything from here is then going back into the system so it'll go into uh, the anti-barrel or the storage drawers and this thing's working absolutely fantastically it's taking its time but we're getting a lot of these uh, loot capacitors and I found one that I kind of really want to try out which I've got in my inventory here and this is a unstable, insatiable, impossible capacitor now unstable modifies it's basically the highest modifier you can get as is impossible and insatiable means that it basically works on all the machines so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try popping this into the alloy smelter it's probably finished now but um, we can always get some more items to put in there yeah let's actually grab some of our energetic alloy essence I don't know why but sometimes when I harvest this I don't actually get the essence I don't have a massive amount of this yet but uh, 41 that should do us I also need to grab some ender pearls so let's do that I'm almost ready to actually turn the mob farm back on now. 23 ender pills, that's all we had. Oh, well, not a problem. Uh, crafting table, that's what we need next. There's a lot of travelling back and forth here, isn't there? Can't wait till we actually get flight. So, how do we do this? Is it. Like that, okay. So let's make up 15 of those. I'm going to pop these in the smelter with the ender pearls. We've still got our 
premium insatiable wonder capacitor in there. So that's that's going relatively quickly, but now let's try this. Yeah, holy crap. <laughs> that's awesome. There we go, that's our vibrant alloys. That should complete another quest for us. So these things are really useful for doing the double layer and octatic capacitors. Uh, we do also have the other option of going down silver, energetic and energized. But uh, these are the ones I know, so I'm probably going to stick with those for now at least. Alright, so I've actually just um, turned the mob farm back on. So the redstone lamps at the top are now turned off. I've also turned the dirt into cursed earth and put a couple of mob farms here. Mob farms, mob fans. So you can see that's working amazing. Uh, it's just get a little bit loud here. Actually might need to turn the sounds down a bit further. There we go. And cows in it. I guess they're the abyssal craft cows, aren't they? Demon cows. But yeah, uh, one problem we're actually having now is this thing is kind of backing up. Now, obviously new drops we've got to insert into the storage drawers before they'll actually go in. Uh, but the main problem I'm having is one, the paper drawers full up, and two, these capacitors are just absolutely taking up all the space because they don't go into the anti barrel, and well, they're kind of like these um, enchantment books, they don't go into. storage drawers that they want to stack. So that's kind of a problem. Okay, so now the mob farm isn't getting backed up anymore. I want to get back into embers. We're working towards getting dawnstone. Uh, so I'm going to make up the mixer centrifuge. That's going to complete our next quest, I believe. Yep, there we go. So it says the ancient codex. Oh, God, yeah, so it wants us to go back to the ancient codex. But it says that Dawnstone is a gold and copper alloy. So I'm going to pop down the mixer centrifuge there. Okay, so I've actually made up a second meller. I've put some copper in here, which we're now pumping into a quantum tank. And over here we've got gold. So what we're going to do is we're going to start pumping those both into the mix a centrifuge to hopefully make dawnstone. Now I'm going to take the stamper and move it elsewhere. It's kind of in the way there. And then we're going to move the mix a centrifuge over a little bit as well. Pop you down in the middle of these. That should be about there. But I need to make a couple more items and then we'll be able to start pumping these in. All right, there we have it. So hooked up the quantum tanks on either of these melters with transfer nodes and transfer pipes. So that's putting gold and copper into the centrifuge. We've got the embers coming in here. Uh, that means we're now getting dawnstone out the top, which is awesome. Because uh, that's what we need to do the next quest, which is to get a dawnstone ingot. And I believe we're going to do that with the stamper. So I've moved the quantum tank with the dawnstone in down to next to the stamper. That's filled up. And then we're going to pop a bar stamp down there. And bang, there's our first dawnstone ingot. Uh, so next we need to actually get a couple of different aspectors. We need lead, silver, dawnstone, copper and iron. Now we do have the dawnstone ingots already. Let's make sure we get all these. Let's have a look, quick look and see what the recipe is for these. So the stamping recipe needs molten dawnstone with a plate stamp. Oh, hang on, let's stop this then. Do we have the plate stamp? There it is. So if I pop you there, that just gives us a dawnstone plate. But that's not what that's not what we want. <laughs> so it needs a plate stamp. It needs molten dawnstone. 
and ember shards. Oh, hang on. Let's head to the nether. Let's go get some ember shards. Just to figure out how to make the aspectus, uh, what you have to do is pump the liquid into the side, have the plate stamp on. You also need to pop some ember shards into the actual basin itself, and that will make the aspectus. Now, we've made the five that we need for the quest. So that is the dawnstone, lead, iron, copper, and silver. You can see I've got the leftover molten metals there. So let's go in and complete that. Complete. There we go. Uh, so next up is Ash. We need to make the Cinder Plinth by the looks of it. So let's get the Agent Codex. And let's see under this. I'm looking for the Cinder Plinth. I don't see it. Um, is that maybe going to be under... There it is. It's got the metal aspects. Um, we need the cinder plinth. Simple machine. Place any item into it. Power of ember, and it will burn the item into black ash. You can automatically place the ash into a bin placed underneath it as well. Several uses can be burned as a poor fuel item. It can be applied to stone to change its colour and texture. And you believe the energy is released in its combustion may have other applications, which I'm guessing is to do with the alchemy. So how do we make a cinder plinth? Let's have a look. So we need some lead plates, a couple of silver ingots, and some caminite bricks or a furnace. Okay, that should be no trouble. And there we have one cinder plinth. So let's go and pop this down over here. Okay, so if I grab the Tinker's Hammer, uh, it says we need to give it some embers. So let's maybe break this off here for now. Pop you there, and there we go. That's taking in ember. Uh, so let's maybe put a couple apples in. Will that work? Yep, so that is getting us Ash Pals. Nice. Let's also complete that quest. Alchemy through fire. So we need to make the alchemy pedestal, exchange tablets, and the beam cannon. Interesting. So we need to make a few different things. So we've got the beam cannon, which is copper plates, ember crystals, dawnstone ingots, and kamenite bricks. Now the exchange table, we need to make up a bunch more bricks. Actually, we're going to need to make up a few more Kamenite bricks as well, actually. Now let's just double check, see if we've got any left over. We do have some bricks. Okay, that's good. Is that everything we need? It was. Nice. And the next thing we need is the alchemy pedestals, which are these guys here. We need five of them which means we're going to need 10 dawnstone ingots and 10 plates and we also need some more ember crystals as well now I'm going to make a few of them not like that like that so yeah uh, we're going to need to go down and head back into never get some more ember crystals but I'll be back with you guys shortly once that's done all right and the last up on the crafting list is five alchemy pedestals so we're going to grab all of this now and we're going to pop it down over here. Got all the uh, ash that we've been making. And I'm probably going to pop it down in this corner. So let's do one, two. I'm not sure if this needs to be in a bigger grid, but we'll give it a try and see if it works. Pop the exchange tablet down there. And the beam cannon. Okay, that's fine. Now we need to get a uh, ember receptor. So let's just grab this one. Pop that there. Just pull an extra bit of light down. Uh, Tinker's hammer. So let's take you from there. That's feeding that with that. Great. Um, 
Now I believe with this we shift right click that, right click that, yep. So the beam cannon's now pointing there. Uh, we do need another lever. Alright, so I've got the pedestal set up with the different aspectors set up on each. I've actually got two of the Dawnstone because if we look at the recipe for the Glimmer Crystal, which is what we're aiming for, this thing takes 64 to 80 ash on a Dawnstone Aspectus. So what we're actually going to do is pop 32 on there, 32 on there, Let's just clean that up. Now we need quartz on the top, so ember shards and some gunpowder. Let's just collect the rest of this up before we do anything else. Now you can actually get those to extract into a uh, chest somewhere below. I did try doing it like that, but you actually need uh, item pipes to do that. So what we're going to do now is fire this thing up and let's see what happens. Okay, so that's triggered that. Uh, we can see the pulsing is coming from the uh, ones with the uh, ash in them. Fingers crossed, we get a glimmer crystal. If we don't, um, it'll at least give us an indication as to how far off the actual result we were. I'm not sure how long this takes. Do you like these effects it's doing though? Oh, there we go. We've got alchemical waste. Dawnstone inaccuracy 6. Okay, that's not a problem. Now, we did the minimum last time. So I'm going to put six more on, three in each stack. So 70 total. And let's give it another go. Okay, um, <laughs> apparently we're out of ember. Let's link this back up, I guess. Oh, no. Not to the lever. Lever? Lever. Oh, I know why it's not working. <laughs> I need to go and put the uh, materials back on. Okay, so attempt two is now underway. I'm just waiting for this to finish up. So this is using 35 ash in each of the Dawnstone pedestals. Any second now, we'll find out if we've actually done it. Any second, come on. Yes, there we have it. We have the Glimmer Crystal. We actually have it. Uh, let's claim that quest and... Where's the one we're looking for? Twilight Forest, detect. Come on. We've got it right there in our inventory. Can we please? Try again. Okay, well that's not working for some reason. Alright, there we go. It took forever for some reason, but uh, that gets us the start of the Twilight Forest quest completed. And we can also take this block of simple crystal from Lordcraft, break it down into simple crystals, and that gets us this quest completed as well. Nice, so that means we can actually start getting into Lordcraft. So using the simple crystals, I actually want to start getting into Lordcraft next because you actually need these to make up the top tier infusion crystal, which is the master infusion crystal, because you need these mana infused shards. Okay, so in the last clip, I think I said I wanted to start getting into Lordcraft next. However, after looking at it, it appears we need quite a lot of simple crystals, more than the nine that we've got at the moment. Um, so what I actually want to do first is make this thing here. This is the workbench from R Plus. Pop that down there. So we can actually use this to start getting into um, some better armors. Because at the moment, yeah, we've not really got a lot there, have we? <laughs> so yeah, I want to start making the different armor sets as far as I can at least. Um, now you can probably see we've already completed the level one. This is through having the mob farm. 
Uh, the dark steel one also auto completed. Um, I'm guessing from the fact that we have got dark steel armor from the mob farm already. Um, but there's a rather large question that we need to go down to do this. Uh, it's going to get us a lot of rack though, and I want to try and complete it as far as is currently possible. Um, I believe I'm going to have to get into actually additions and do the empower at some point soon. Um, but yeah, if we look in the anti barrel, see we've got plenty of leather arm there. And actually, what I want to do is take a few of these pieces here that aren't quite fully repaired and see if we can do something about that. See if we can get a uh, fully repaired set of armour that we can then use to start doing the question. Alright, here we go. So I've got the full set of leather armour and all I need to do now is go through and upgrade each piece to the next level. Hopefully I've got this right. Yep, and there we go. There's the chest plate. Okay, apparently that's not how you do this one. Let's have a look. Uh, coal boots. Now, oh, of course, it's at the uh, top, isn't it? And then the last one, leather. Um, so the next ones we need to do are going to be uh, the copper, the tin, and the silver, I believe. So I'm going to do this, and I'll be back with you guys in a second. All right, so that's the uh, armor done up to aluminium. The next one actually requires void crystal. And to get void crystal, we check in JI. You can see we need to use the atomic reconstructor on coal. This is from actually additions. So if we look up the atomic reconstructor, it's this thing here. Need some iron, redstone, and iron casing. And the only thing we don't have at the moment is black quartz. Which you can get uh, just from mining. Or you can smelt down smoky quartz, which is never quartz surrounded by a surrounded piece of coal. So I got eight of these and one of these. That makes us eight smoky quartz. Let's head over here and pop that in the furnace. And any second now we should get smoke, uh, black quartz, not smoky quartz. But that should also be the uh, start of a question if I can find it. Here it is. Boom, another five rack. And this is what we're actually going to do next, is the uh, Atomic Reconstruction and Power quest line. Alright, I've made up the Atomic Reconstructor. I've put a button on top of it to power it, and you can see um, at the moment the redstone mode is on pulse. So this means it's going to send out one pulse when I click the button, like so. And all we need to do is throw down the items that we want to reconstruct. So I've popped down 32 coal blocks, press the button. And bang, that's 32 void crystal blocks. Nice. If we check the quest, uh, we do actually need to get void crystals themselves. But you can see it works like any other block. We can just pop it in our crafting inventory grid. And there we go, that's void crystals done. Now I'm grab a few of those. If we head back over to the workbench, we should now be able to complete the next. Uh, armor quest. Yeah, avoid crystal pants, helmet, boots, and last one, chest placed. Nice. All right, so I've covered up a few more materials now. Quite a few, actually. Um, so what I want to do is progress through the rest of this quest chain up until uh, Black Quartz Armour. After that we need to get Thorium. And I believe Thorium, if we have a look in here, 
we need to get from Landia. And there we have our fancy Black Quartz armor. Let's get that quest completed as well. That is as far as we can go with the Armor Plus mod for the moment. Let's see, once we've been to Landia, uh, we can then go a little bit further. As well, Lapis Bronze, Tungsten, Red Sword, all stuff we have easy access to up until Boron. Okay, so I think it's about time now that we head into the Twilight Forest. And the reason I want to go there is because I need to try and find more uh, spacious crystal, not spacious crystal, simple crystals, that's the one I'm thinking of. And once we've got those, we can start getting into Lordcraft properly. So I'm just setting up a ring of dirt and I need some buckets. Where the hell are my buckets? There they are. Actually, I only need two of those. Oh, god damn it. God damn it all. Um, <laughs> I think I've got the bone mealer effect on, haven't I? I have. Damn it. So it turns out I didn't have the bone meal effect on. I checked my ability bottle and it's still stored in there. Uh, what was happening is I was running near these. Now running acts the same as twerking and makes plants grow. So what we're going to do now is toss this in from a safe distance. Not too far. Not far enough. <laughs> oh wow. Come on. Just don't want to get too close to this. Because of that. <laughs> That lovely lightning strike. Alright, let's get rid of those saplings. I don't need those. Uh, let's toss this dirt and buckets in there. Right, okay. Um, let's also put the ability ball back. Don't want to accidentally lose that. So, let's head through into the Twilight Forest. It's been a long time since I've done the Twilight Forest, since uh, Sevtech, I believe. I was spawning in a firefly forest. Just waiting for this damn thing to load. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Alright, so here we are in the Twilight Forest. Uh, first thing I've done is set up a waypoint for the portal so we don't get lost. Um, what the hell's this? Sulfur ore. Well, I said I've got to collect it anyway, but it doesn't seem to. Um, stack does it in which case let's leave you behind Ooh, night at all don't remember seeing that before um prosperity all no we don't need that titanium all i think we've actually got a little bit of that um but yeah what we're looking for are the simple crystals I take it we're going to have to go down a little for these. Let's get some light. Peridot, silicon, sulfur again. Oh, those are gas vents. Interesting. Yeah, here's what we're looking for. Simple crystal deposits. A hole free. Okay, guess I'm going to keep searching then. Okay, now this is more like it. Up to 44, nice. Um, now I believe from watching other people's videos that we do need a fair bit of this. So I'm going to keep hunting around and see if I can find a few stacks of this stuff. So it turns out I was mistaken, you don't actually need land here to get to the Forum more. You can actually find it in the Twilight Forest which is absolutely amazing. Um, not doing too badly so far, I'm up to a stack and a half. And I'm collecting this Electrolene ore, as I've not seen that before. Do we have anything else interesting down here? A bit more electro, electrotine, if I can say it properly. But yeah, all I'm doing at the moment is basically just going around and vein mining all of this stone. And then seeing what we can find behind it. Makes it incredibly easy just to see uh, large chunks of ores and such. And I've got to remember to eat as well. Bain mining really does take up your uh, hunger. But what's this? That looks like draconium to me. 
that's draconium nice didn't think we'd be getting that until we get to the end and mana infused ore as well yes i'll definitely be taking that so i'm back from the twilight forest i've got a little over four stacks of simple crystals i'm about to head back there do a bit more now i've got some more food uh, but you can see i've also upgraded my armor to invar which if we look at the quest chain takes us all the way down here uh the next thing we need is boron so i'm going to keep an eye out for that and if we can do that we might be able to get up to the emeratic crystal armor which would be nice all right guys well we've got a fair bit done today we got the um rest of the endo io stuff done or at least up to the item conduits uh we got a lot of armor done and we also got the rest of the embers bit done so we can start getting into the twilight forest Next episode, I think I'm definitely going to start getting into Lordcraft. I've currently got about seven and a half stacks of crystals, which is amazing. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is going to be it for this episode. If you have enjoyed it, then please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe as it really helps out the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.